Hello and welcome to the Comedy Button. I'm Anthony Gallegos. With me is Brian Altan. Scott Bromley. What's going on, Internet? Brian Scott. Money in the bank. And Max Goville. Welcome to the Comedy Button. My name's Anthony Gallegos. Joining me this week is Brian Altano. <laughs> Scott Bromley. What is going on, Internet? Ryan Scott. I collect spores, mold, and fungus. <laughs> oh, way to bring it down. <laughs> oh, damn. And Max Scoville. A kiss on the first date. Ooh. That's a big Twinkie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I wasn't sure which I was gonna. Do. I was gonna say I kiss on the first date, but then I remembered that Harold Ramis died. And that sucks. Yeah, it does suck. Why, um, is that, why, why does that suck? Just, it does suck. Yeah, I don't know why we started the show with a eulogy, but here we go. Was that his? Was that? Was that his? Was that a quote he said? I kissed on the first date. No, I it, that was something oh. I was going to say, and then I forgot, and, t- and then Ryan reminded me that he passed uh, away. Yeah. This is the okay. comedy button tribute to a great comedian. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, I actually he I was thinking about it and. Uh, I haven't been uh, like I typically uh, when I, uh, people are on Twitter and they're like the celebrity died. Everyone tweet things. It it pisses me off because I'm like that's uh, ghoulish. It's yeah. actually ghoulish. Um, <laughs> and, and I think about it, I'm it's like a goulash I'm like, of I'm sadness. Like, Harold Ramis, like that actually does make me sad. And I was like, who's the last? Because it wasn't celebrity? called Ghoulbusters. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who am I going to call? <laughs> it's a really rough time for me. I didn't realize that he made Groundhog Day, which is actually, it's one of my favorite movies growing up, which is... Yeah, today Today know. was a really uh, magical, I didn't realize for a lot of people. It was really cool just hearing people go, hey, wait a minute, he worked on Back to School and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, he made most of your favorite comedies. The Animal 80s. House and yeah, yeah. exactly. Yep. It would have been a great day to just flood the world with misinformation. Be like, his yeah, his his work on <laughs> Basketball Diaries was incredible. <laughs> yeah. He did the Beetlejuice animated series. <laughs> he did it. Well, he invented the Happy Meal, and he did. <laughs> he did he a did rewrite write. on Terms of Endearment. Yeah, and he did write the Ghostbusters video game with Dan Aykroyd, right, yeah. Ryan? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. That's a good game. You guys, should, if you can find that somewhere, you should play it. It's great Absolutely, writing. that is that is Ghostbusters three straight up. Yep, the, yeah, the best it, one so you can ever ask for. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's what it was. Because e- it's e- amazing. Even, even when they were talking about making Ghostbusters three, they're like, we want to send them to hell and yep. another dimension. That's pretty and that's much what the game what, was. Spoilers. That's what yeah. Ghostbusters the video game. Also, is. it's got shameless product placement in there, but they do it right. They've got the retro Doritos logo on yeah. the side of trucks, which I didn't because the brilliant. game takes place in 1994. It takes place two. Like uh, four, four or five years after yep. Ghostbusters two, so, so they're yeah. still driving the Ghostbusters two pimped out MC or not MC Hammer, but uh, Bobby Brown mm-hmm. machine. The, oh, oh man! So I was really, I was really you, happy you know, they uh, they did a they did a vigil outside of the firehouse in New York City. Yeah, I thought that was great. That's did they really? Uh, did they? Yeah. Wow! Yeah. I was really happy about that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was saying I, I don't get that bent out of shape about celebrities, but the last one who it hit me this hard was was John Hughes. And I just, when John Hughes died, I just got fucking shit faced. Like I, I like drank a bottle of tequila, mm-hmm. and I watched, Man. I watched a Breakfast Club, and then I watched like uh, sixteen candles, and then I watched Saint Elmo's Fire, and then I realized that he didn't actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm like a bottle of tequila. He went out and shot Joel Schumacher <laughs> just to make it right. Did, yeah. um, but, um, did you watch the Beetlejuice animated series? <laughs> He was the lead writer on <laughs> Yeah, Seven Years in Tibet was probably John Hughes' best movie. You know what? The last, the last celebrity... He invented Mad Balls. <laughs> the last celebrity that got me that bad was... It was to such a degree, it could have been the only one that... Uh, that day, this person died, I went to my then-girlfriend's apartment... And then, and she she was it one of the guys from the Prodigy. She she <laughs> looked at me. She opened the door. She looked at me. She's like, "You're gonna be really sad about who died today." And I was like, "Don Adams." And it was Don Adams. <laughs> what? Don Adams. I'm sorry, I gotta laugh at that. The creator Inspector of Adams? Gadget. Oh, <laughs> the voice of Inspector Gadget. Or most, more importantly, Maxwell Smart. <laughs> wait, wait. She, you guys had this okay. conversation, huh. and you didn't immediately get down on one knee. <laughs> How did she know? I didn't even know how. Diana, that is so specific. <sighs> that is I, the specific ocean. That is. 
That was that's the I love Don Adams. <laughs> oh my god, I yeah, love. I thought, that. I thought I you lo- meant Charles Adams, and I realized that I yeah. don't. I don't know. Yeah. Dude, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think Don Adams loved Don Adams. <laughs> Don Adams. <laughs> You know what? It's, oh my god! So, was your day spent watching like Tennessee Tuxedo reruns and? It's all about Get Smart. <laughs> okay, all my favorite. You show. didn't like his Tennessee Tuxedo? I, I love Get Smart and Inspector Gadget. Did oh, you do okay. some really sad Doctor Claw fan Charlie? art where it's like, I guess I won't get you next time. I'm sure someone's hand that. like down, like not <laughs> not not banging the table. It's Claw grabbing a tissue. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, wow. didn't, we, didn't we do a rundown of celebrity deaths last time? Yeah, we did. I, we talked. To, I talked about how Farley was mine. Oh, that's right. And how I remembered exactly where. So it was. I, I thought it was kind of shocking when uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman died because I went through that whole like, man, I didn't know he was a heroin addict, and then I was like, man, I didn't know you could be a fat heroin addict. <laughs> you can if you're rich, really. Yeah, like that scene. Like maybe like. You do okay. heroin on one arm and then butter shots on the other. Maybe, yeah, maybe the like she says. No, I don't know. I think maybe like the the stereotype in my brain for heroin addicts needs an update. Because <laughs> yeah. you just see the people from Train Spotting. Yeah, because I just like to me, it's like I would never expect there's like, hey, overweight actor that's at like he probably gets like five free iPads a night just going to junkets and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You I mean, tried that in for heroin. A friend of mine, I don't know if I, a friend of mine who was really in the reggae scene. I don't know why he would know this. He probably maybe is wrong. I don't know. But the fact that the, the reason heroin addicts are frequently skinny is because they just they don't they don't have money for food because they spend it on heroin and then they don't really do anything. They just yeah, no, I there. mean that's that's all drug addicts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, except for yeah. potheads. Well, I mean, cokeheads go out. Potheads and do lots always of have enough money for food. <laughs> no. But not good food. No, not good food. Doritos. Also, two things I'll never say. One, uh, I never, I've never bought a rap album at Starbucks. I can go my life without saying that. And I'll also never say my good friend who's in the, the reggae scene. <laughs> <laughs> what? Have I told you guys about this this kid? No. Okay. No. no, definitely not. My, John, my, John Marley. His name is not Riago, right? Because I don't want to do this thing again. <laughs> no. Uh, my good pal. This was this was straight up like. I think back on this and it's one of those things where like like if you had like a really awkward sidekick in all of your flashback sequences where you're like who is that like well uh it's a long story like if if before Batman and Robin it was like Batman and like a horse that he dressed I mean I think he did that at one point but <laughs> the point is in high school I'm I, I, I yeah I'd like to, to, <laughs> I hung out I'm with more a, interested in Bat Horse than, you know. than your Rastafarian <laughs> well, his name was it was it was just, is do everyone called him Rasta James <laughs> And he, uh, Bumba Clot, Rasta James. A lot of mercy. He told me what Bumba Clot and, and was Batty he white? Boy meant. Was he white? Yes, he was white. Okay, I'm Sonoma. sorry. I wanted to paint a picture for our audience who was, also no, knew he was definitely white. So he's, he's <laughs> white. And not only was he white, but he was like really, really scrawny. Like he was like a really like scrawny little guy. And like as opposed to being like, you know, you, you think of, uh, um, you know, Jim Brewer and Half Baked or somebody, yep. something. Mm-hmm. He was like, if you put Rastafari in apparel, Sort of on a really nerdy kid, so he wore like, uh, you know, like like cargo shorts and like running shoes and like a white t shirt. But then he'd have like a like a tam on and like a, a, like a big nasty like pube beard that he didn't shave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's the thing is he couldn't grow dreadlocks because he had like you know straight you know straight brown hair. So he just had really gross hair. I'm just, and, I'm just picturing James Franco from Pineapple Express. Sure. You're, you're way off. Like James really? Franco and Pineapple Express is way more like, like, w- like you're like, wow, he's that like looks a like a, sto- a stoner. Yeah. I'm picturing Justin Thoreau in Zoolander. Uh, which one's Justin? Thoreau? He was the DJ. Closer. <laughs> much, I'm, I'm much, picturing a much closer skeleton in a garbage can. <laughs> you're, getting, you're, you're getting warmer. Um, no, because there's like I'm glad that you did describe his body type because there's really only two types of white. Rasta kids, there's the really skinny ones and the really fat ones. There's mm-hmm. nothing in the middle. Like, no guy's ever been like, hey, I, I just came back from the gym for four hours. Time to go okay. to this uh, yeah. Bob Marley tribute concert. <laughs> so, no, no, no. He wasn't, he wasn't <laughs> that like... never happens. That's the thing is he wasn't like... He he wasn't like gangly skinny. Like, he was just like skinny. You know, he, he was actually... I guess he was kind of in the middle. He actually had sort of a pot belly. 
He wore like really big. No <laughs> shit, really. <laughs> big You're not supposed to smoke it there, dog. But no, that's the other thing is he didn't he didn't smoke weed. Like he quit weed because he got really into like Rastafarianism. Uh, uh, and he was like wait, he was well, like that's, no, that's, that's two ships passing in the and, night, and that's why he didn't <laughs> shave his face either. He was like, it's just I'm I'm really I'm feeling iry. And that's the dude. That's like is, saying I quit Bud Light dude, because I, uh, I got really into metal. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, but then he wound up like, uh, he did a bunch of reggae, reggae producing. He was like working, uh, ah, fuck. I, Modest Yahoo? Uh, no, not Modest Yahoo. He was actually like, that guy, mm-hmm. that guy is something else. And I He's was gonna like, be a star. No, he was, he was like, I'm not into him. He was, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I can't remember. I don't, don't want to talk shit, but reggae producing. That is the easiest kind right. of producing. Right. That is the easiest. You just go, there's like, it goes. Yeah. But, but try doing that when you're not stoned and you got a problem. No, nobody notices. Yo, what he said doesn't matter. There's a um, unicorn on the roof. <laughs> Shut up. Though he ran the one, he went, ran the one, uh, reggae radio show on the local radio in Sonoma that was called Irie Sounds. Oh. Uh, Oh, oh my god! And everyone was like, "What's the deal with this kid? Like, does he smoke a lot of weed?" And like, we mostly just kind of hung out together. And one day he shows up to to school, and like at lunch, he's got a he's got a fucking uh, a melodica. You know those things? <laughs> no, yeah, I, does, I know. Does Anthony, Anthony has one. one. Yeah, he yeah, does that's, have that's, one. Yeah. Okay. That was the thing that I would sometimes play in, and you were like, you know, when you were commenting on how sad and alone I'd be. It's, like, it's like Mario Paint unplugged, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he'd carry that thing around and like try and play different songs. Like he'd, he'd print out like the melodica tabs and oh. be like, "Hey guys, check it out! It's the um, it's uh, the theme from uh, uh, Land of the Lost." And we'd be like, "Stop!" Which is, I I think he's partially responsible for me not getting played in high school. Because Melod- he was playing melodica the whole time. Because you'd like, follow me around with a fucking melodica, like a Pied Piper. The only thing was missing was like a Pied Piper, like another. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so then everyone was like, "This guy is this guy is a, a fucking a goof. This guy is full of shit. Whatever." After high school, eighteen joints all day long. <laughs> So love you bam, 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 bam. every day. A lot I'm of mercy. Every right near the beach. <laughs> um, I think uh. this is racist. I think this is, I forget it. Fuck it. Right uh. after, right after high school, he was like, everyone was like, "What are you going to do?" He's like, "I'm not going to college." And we're like, "Well, no shit, you're not going to college. Look at you. You got a, you got a pube neck beard, you know, and, and like you're wearing a Rasta hat. You're, it was like one of those rubies Rastafarian hats with the dreadlocks in it." But oh, so it was a fake dreadlock? No, hat? no. Was he a cop? I thought you were, no. like, I thought you were talking about like Ruby's costume shop. No, no, no. Yeah, no, it was like that. But if like you tried to do it homemade using your own hair clippings, so he just had like a Rasta hat on that sort of looked like it kind of had dreadlocks. Out I, of think it, was, it was I think he was. I think he was DT. He was an undercover cop. Yeah. Don't it bang actually, up, don't bang. Now, get on the floor. <laughs> now that you mentioned it, his dad was a private investigator. See, mm-hmm. so he could have been. But then he fucking moved Jump to Jamaica. This he moved right to Jamaica after high school, and everyone was like, "Wow." He just did it. It was like E.T. on the bike taking off. You're like, this isn't going to work. And then he fucking does it. And you're like, how is that happening? And he moved to fucking Jamaica. And he was like, he's, he's still there. He's still fucking there. He got citizenship in Jamaica. He got married. He converted to Islam. He got fucking married. And it well, turns now out he's it never was getting a, back in the country. It was a, it was a, like a, a scam. <laughs> Like some lady at his mosque, like tried to tried to seduce him, but hey, it turns you know, out she you know, was uh, just a, she was being set up by like a kid. I sound like I'm lying, but it fucking happened. You do. Too. Just to back up, uh, ET didn't end with a whole planet of ETs being like, uh, no, you you're the wrong color. <laughs> That dude would not have been, that doesn't work. The, this this woman like entered a sham marriage with him because she thought he had money, but he didn't. I think it's, it's she's incredible, like, incredible though that that kid print. that kid far <laughs> earlier than any of us knew exactly who he fucking wanted to be, and he saw it through. Like, yeah, the rest, it's amazing. You know, yeah, Junior was, Reed. That, that's who he was hanging out with all the time. Who's that? No, know, he wasn't really that. hanging out with Junior Reed. No, he was the real Junior Reed. Yeah, really? Yeah, he was working the merch table in high school, and then he wound up doing like production shit with him. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I don't even know who that is. He's a reggae singer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Boom, bang, <laughs> on, bang. There's a junior. Steel drum of the day. Oh, yeah, mercy. So reggae, everybody. Don't, yeah. don't, not even once. Reggae. So, oh, fuck. All right. So I did the worst thing I've ever done in my entire life by accident the other day. 
That's that is not hyperbole. I actually did the worst thing I've ever done in my entire wow. life. This was uh, what I like to call accidental racism. <laughs> I hate that. Which one never plans for, but I can promise you, I promise you, this is worse than any occurrence of accidental racism that anyone has ever heard. I Are we pro- including Cosmo Kramer? That's not accidental. No, that was okay. No, when when a man stands on stage and says the N word ten times in the row, he doesn't he didn't slip. That was a he. That's real racism. Okay. Yeah. Um. So mine was not racism because I'm not racist. I love everybody. It sounds a lot for, like Michael Richards so far. Except for people who are missing limbs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they are no. gross. But they're not a race. But that's yet. not a race. That's not a race yet. Um, if it was a race, they would have lost it already. So, <laughs> as long as it was a foot race. <laughs> um, I've, been, I've been juggling a, a billion projects recently, so I've been a little more disheveled than I should be. And I, I'm making my own lunch, bring it in, and drink and drinking more water. So I have my big water bottle with me and everything. So I'm heading to work, and uh, Teresa's like, "Can you take the trash out?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." So I pack my lunch, and I've got uh, my lunch bag and some stuff on top of it. And the garbage bag, on the other hand, and my backpack, and my keys, and my glasses, and my hoodie, and my jacket, and I'm saying brap, brap, and all that other bullshit. That's not true. So I open up the door, and uh, in my apartment, right side of the apartment is a long hallway. At the end of the hallway, there's a garbage chute. I'm like, I'm going to bring this trash out to the garbage chute. So I open up the door, and my backpack falls off my arm a little bit. My book bag, or my bag falls down a little bit, and I'm holding my lunchbox, and on top of my lunchbox is the top of my lunch, and there's uh, an apple, and there's a banana. And the banana, as I open the door, flies out of my hands and lands right at the feet of an elderly African-American woman (laughs) who is standing at the end of my hallway, knocking on her friend's door. So I accidentally threw a banana at a black lady. <laughs> oh. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's I, okay it's because so she bad. saw you. She saw you fall. Like, <clears throat> this is like the accidental. This is like your accidental racism mm-hmm. is is something that just like oh gravity took over and made me a racist because I thought in in my head because I have a, an incredible amount of white guilt. No, but it's it also wasn't be- like you actually was like hey old lady here right and threw no. It so at here's her. the problem for people that don't get why this is terrible. There are still places in the world where people are racist, sadly. And in those places, people do horrible things, like throw bananas at black people. Right. Which, if, if written in a sentence, is sort of a funny thing to say. Because I think throwing a banana at anybody is hilarious. Yeah, bananas I love are, Mar- bananas we play, are we play arguably a lot of the funniest Kart. fruit. Bananas are hilarious, and bananas Mario are Kart's the, great. Yeah. But doing those two things, and black people are great, and they're also hilarious. I don't know if they're great at Mario Kart. But putting all those things together, like taking a banana and throwing it at a black person by accident, is one of the worst things you could possibly Not do. Not like laughing at them, but like when they, they say funny things that are interesting. You yes. Know? Yes. But so, you, you didn't like physically. No, like, I you, didn't. You, like, and tripped that, but, and it fell. But that's, it wasn't entirely clear to oh. that woman. Or to me, because I looked horrified as it happened. And it all happened in slow motion as most right. awkward, terrible, one-second intervals of yeah, this Yeah, if you're watching a fucking trip. replay in Worms Armageddon, yeah. I mean, what else do you see a banana flying in slow motion? Exactly. In? So it, <laughs> land, it lands at her feet, and she looks up at me, and I look at her. And before I'm like, no! She, look, she gets so disgusted that she spun around. And ran out of the building. Whoa! Wow! Really? And I never saw her again. So that's my that's my wow. like, that's my cross to bear in hell or whatever. Uh, and I didn't know what to do because I was like, oh my god! And I didn't want to like you didn't want to chase her down. I the didn't want to grab the banana, banana and, and be like, and, it's not just kidding, and chase her down the street. Yeah, because that's that would have made it worse, and I probably would have thrown it by accident again. Yeah, <laughs> or it would have fell under her feet, and then she would have slipped, slipped and, and died. Um, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! So I, I just felt horrible, but I, uh, I, I picked up the banana, and I went to work. <laughs> Man. And I Brian, kept that's... it. And I kept it because I, bananas. Have are, you have you kept it as a reminder food. for? No, Ryan. The, I don't know what the, you do in your house, but after what? a few days, fruit gets gross. <laughs> well, I certainly don't throw it at people. All right, that's fuck. You know, I had a bit of accidental I, racism today too. Really? So my friend came in. My my boss. He comes in and he got he got a, a box of fortune cookies from some press event he was at, and he walks in <laughs> and he throws one to me, and I say, "Ooh." Chinaman's cookies. Okay, that's <laughs> no, that's pretty head-on uh, yeah. racism. That's, <laughs> that's, that's 
I thought you were going to tell tell a story similar to my accidental racism. That's ten times worse, man. When I was in college, um, I was going down down the stairs in the dorm, and there's the stairwell that all of our dorm rooms had. And then as soon as I got to one of the floors, the door swung open, and I was like, "Oh, it spooked me there!" And it was a black girl. She and she just looked at me. And I was like, I, "I I mean, I was scared." And it was like by saying "spooked me there." I made it worse by going, oh, I, I meant I was scared. Oh, because I was, I was like, and I was just like, just gotta go. Oh, that's horrible. Because she really did scare the shit out of me because it was a door flying hate, at me. I hate everything yeah. sometimes. That is just, uh, But that was, that was one of those white guilt racism moments that wasn't really racist that yeah, you like, in, then turned racist. Between this and, and like the coffee, the, the, <coughs> the coffee black story i told yeah. on this show yeah. a couple months back like i'm terrified at what my like the the third thing i do will be because it's going to be bad like i don't know if i, I maybe I accidentally you're going to kill someone i might hang someone by accident <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> crazy right. rube goldberg. no i don't but it won't be yeah it'll be <laughs> like a rube goldberg device at city hall where yep. someone slips into a news yep. you're gonna you're gonna be like up there passing a black family and you're gonna see david lynch and you're gonna be like oh Lynch, Lynch. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Gonna, and then they're gonna see you, and you're gonna be like, "I'm a, I'm a huge fan," and they're gonna just, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't win. Life is hard. Don't feel is bad, horrible. Brian. I, it, I know that maybe in some part you were like sitting there thinking about it for a long time today, but I'll say that of all the people I've known in my life, you're one of the people I've known mostly that takes everyone at face value until they've given you like a reason not to. Like, I mean, like you give everyone a fair chance. I guess is what I'm really trying to say. Sure, you're not. I also one think to be that. Like, I also think that everyone is garbage. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Brian is equal opportunity. You all are probably pretty terrible. And then he gets to know you, and he's like, oh, you're awesome. Yeah. It's good to go. Thanks so. for uh, for backing me up there. That was yeah. good. All right. Cool. So let's get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Beep, beep, Not, beep. I, so, I, I, you know, uh, as the eternal slip of my life, you know, it's weird. I have, I have this weird dichotomy going on, right? Like, I've been seeing a girl regularly, and that's kind of interesting. But at the same time... I feel like my life has gotten increasingly into the fucking slump of, uh, like, like uh, what you stay at, sit at see is like more stereotypical loneliness than ever before. So like on Saturday, I spent five hours straight doing my first official session of uh, of the Star Wars uh, role playing game. Oh and, boy! Uh, <laughs> oh boy! I just want <laughs> you're smart. You're smart, man. Because if you didn't start that story with yeah, I've been seeing this girl regularly. <laughs> a fucking four tigers would have pounced on you at the end of that. <laughs> so wait, do you mean, I know that. Wait, so do you mean the, the, the like the like the West End Games or like the Wizards of like the official? This is the yeah the one that came, they they did officially release rules on it pretty recently, and so me and my four friends were all around as a posse. Doing an so adventure that my friend has done for us over. You've never and played we do, that before. No, and we do it over Google <laughs> Video voice chat, like group hangout. So we're See, all I'm sitting just there. <laughs> Scott and like, sounds we, like to make a reference, Scott sounds like salacious crumb right now. And when we <laughs> and, and when we like enter a bar and stuff like that, and my friend's role playing story, he puts on like audio for us all to hear of like Star Wars bar sounds and stuff because he's like, you're in a bar. Does he play and stuff like, besides Figur and Dan and the modal nodes? Because if he's just playing that shit, that's like kind of, yeah. you know. No, no, no. He just finds like random. <laughs> this is good like when, uh, when Mike Morono was here and we were just like, ah, I'm out. <laughs> Whatever happened to that guy? He sure knew about Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah, he'll be back. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I older, just. Uh, older people return. I just, uh, I thought it would be an interesting experience to try. And sure enough, it did not let me down with how nerdy it is. You know, I don't really? know. Really? God, as I, I get older, I kind of don't give a shit about embracing that stuff nearly as much. I mean, I never really gave a shit about it, as most people know, but even as I get older, especially not anymore, it's like one of the best ways to hang out with friends from a, a far way away. But I thought you guys would have some fun knowing that, just because it's it's so fucking... It's like... It's, it's, so that's what I'm saying. I guess my point to everyone is, you can do that, and no one says that you can't also get laid that same day. You know what? Yeah, that's true. I've been in that, uh, I've been in that same boat, actually. Um... So if there's any, like, any surprise when I went to Japan, I brought back a whole lot of fucking weird anime garbage. I, uh, <laughs> I fit five model kits in my luggage. Like, like, uh, that's like two cubic feet of model kits. Yep. Um, I don't know what we pay the TSA for these days. They should so I've <laughs> <laughs> should have beat you with dogs. 
<laughs> should have grabbed dead dogs by the leg and beat you until you were dead also. And like, I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to have a healthy, you know, uh, late twenties, semi mature relationship. Sure. But I also got, uh, I got Jan a copy of Persona 4 for her Vita before I left. Fuck so yeah. she's playing her fucking JRPG on the couch and I'm building a fucking Gundam. And that was all of yesterday. And then to try and spend some time together, we watched a fucking Miyazaki movie. And I'm like, baby, we're fucking weeaboos again. What do we do? <laughs> hey, what did you do? Nothing. Oh, ate some, the ate, I was going to say, okay. it's just that had weird. Some, had some mochis and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I love that we all diss the shit out of your friend for cosplaying as a Jamaican, but you getting the biggest free slide for <laughs> pretending you're Japanese. No, more power to him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Man. Sure. Uh, you would, would, Anthony, how is that relationship going? Because it's been it's, it's been like six, seven weeks now. Is she part of your campaign? Uh, she. You know, it's the first time in my life I've ever done a. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess it would best be summed up as a friends with benefits thing, which is really weird, right? Yeah. Especially for you guys who are doing, who are listening to the show and like, like, uh, and you guys sitting in that room who know me, like, that's crazy for me to do anything like that. Yeah. Um, are you having fun? Yeah. And you know, it's, and, 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 she, and I think she's having fun too. And, uh, she, she just comes over and we watch a bunch of Game of Thrones together cause I've never watched it. That is and, a great way to have sex. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> all right, I've and, seen enough horses die. Time to fuck. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, it, I will say one it's, horse uh, that died. Shut up! It stuck with there's, me. There's more than one horse that dies, uh, but it's also I mean, so that violent. One great that, horse scene, though. God, I can't was, wait to see what horse they kill off in the next season. That was not a great horse scene. That was horrible. Yeah, I mean, and there's so many moments in that show where it's just like there was definitely one. Is I finished the first season with her where I wanted her to leave. And it wasn't because I disliked her. I told her this, too. It's like, I don't really want you, but I kind of wish you weren't here because I just need time to fucking process what happened. Like, that show does affect me a lot more than I thought it ever would. Listening to people talk about it for months and months, you know, I was like, whatever. But it is fucking good. But, uh, no, I mean, my relationship with her is really interesting. I definitely feel like there's a, it's a, <clears throat> it's an interesting, di- like, sort of dynamic we have just because I am so much older than she is. And so. No, you're not. Eight years? That's, I'm almost a, I mean, it's. I could be your dad. That's only three seasons of Game of Thrones. How many? It's, it, <laughs> it's not that, it's, it's not that, it's more like, it's more like the windows of our life that we're in is by that why it feels older. Like if I was 40 and she was 30 something, it'd be a different story. But because she just graduated college, it's just like she's here in one place and I'm in another and we aren't exactly like, you know, it's just like she hasn't moved on to, living regular adult life yet and i've been doing that for a while now so yep it's just, you watch game different... of thrones she watches girls and those shows are not on at the same time yeah it's a cold exactly. world <laughs> <laughs> brian gets me and knows how yeah. to put it Yo, speaking of which oh, ryan and i saw hodor in real life today oh really yeah we saw a game of thrones character sitting out of the coffee bean on market <laughs> street and he had i think i saw george rr R. martin himself <laughs> really George R. Martin. We saw some characters today. Yeah, it was, it was fun. We I saw, was we we saw so, like the crazy homeless guy you play. We uh-huh. saw Jay and Silent Bob. Yeah, we did. We saw the world's fattest, well dressed man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really. That was okay. This was really? kind of ama- this was amazing. <laughs> we saw a man that looked like if you took uh, if you took a waitress from a classy restaurant and then you inflated him. <laughs> You're like, all right, let's see if we can get him to fly to the moon. <laughs> and you put a, a, a balloon pipe up his ass, and you're like, pump, 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 pump. And then you're like, let's see how fat balls bulbs can down, walk down the straight right now. And he's like, bada, 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 bada. So he just looks like, he just, he, I'm imagining the cartoon rich man in every 1940s comic strip. Yes. Where he comes in with a cigar, he's like, yep. I'll buy the entire building. Yeah. Yep. My name's Richard if, Pendlesworth. Like, if, if you took the, the, uh, the, the ball from, uh, Indiana Jones, <laughs> and, and, you put, put and you put shoes and a, and a blazer on it, and roll down the street. You have no more room, not even for a wafer thin mint. <laughs> but I, I was like, I, well, Ryan, I and I were, bucket. Ryan and I were kind of every week just walking down the street in San Francisco. I love it. Just... I love it. But, but Ryan and I were like the, at the at a weird crossroads with it because we were like, all right. I said to him that I think that if you got that big, fuck it, you get to wear whatever you want, right? You don't, yeah. you don't have to conform to our laws anymore because you don't conform to our chairs. 
So and you should just, be able to wear whatever you want. But he just got a really nice suit. Yeah. And, and there's a 20 minutes every morning where he's like, bada, 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 and he goes and button and it goes, poof, and then shoots his neighbor and she dies like, Barr! and then a cat you hear like the off screen, <laughs> and then he goes, Barr! and then he eats five to 12 boxes of Jimmy Dean's breakfast button ears, and then he gets out on the road and he rolls, bada, 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 and like the, he steps on a, a hen, and then <laughs> a hen. <laughs> like eight cars crash and all this, all this bad stuff happens. Like uh, a helicopter tries to shoot him, and he goes Bruh, and swats it. Like, there's no reason for I him to like, dress. Why is he dressed nice? I'm still stuck on him. Then. Brian, <laughs> you're ending on a hen. Your <laughs> descriptions go from like something I can imagine in San Francisco uh-huh. to <laughs> videos of weird Skyrim mods I want to look up. <laughs> That's what this guy looked like. He looked like a, he looked like a man mod. Like someone was like, let's make a regular man, but forty we times modded and balloon people and large hens into Skyrim. And there's helicopters now too. We've replaced the dragons. Yeah, he's helicopters. It's, it, it's, it's one of those YouTube Brian. videos that has like thirty-seven thousand views, and it's like balloon man goes to Skyrim, and it's like ba da dum bum ba da dum bum, and it plays, and it's like, do you like balloons? And he comes rolling down the street, like it was so gross. But like he, this is what that guy should wear every day: a trash bag. <laughs> That's it. There's no reason for him to wear like he's like putting on nice shoes. Like he's got to bend over and be like burr, 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 and tie. Like, oh, please. he has someone do that for him. Who? I, uh, His butler. Who? He doesn't have a butler. He's got. A, he's a well dressed man. He's got hands grafted onto a dog. And I saw people in this town in my neighborhood. <laughs> Who had butlers? I was walking by their house at like nine at night, and it was it was one of those cartoon like super long tables with candelabra lit with candles and a butler serving two old people. Yeah, and Stacy and I are looking in like the two poor peasants on Christmas Eve, going, <laughs> "Can we have some, please?" When you first moved to this neighborhood, you told me that you and Stacy used to go on your poor walks. Yeah, where you just walk up in the rich neighborhoods and spy in people's front windows. <laughs> we still do it. It's so much That's fun. It's so weird. But Scott, you're, you're your neighborhood's a lot weird. like mine, where you're right. You're on the balance beam between like uh, rich and poor. Yes. Where to the left is like really nice houses and white people and stuff like that, and to the right it's like China, Ch- Asian flea market bonanza. Yeah. Uh, where River City Ransom, as we described it earlier on yeah. the show. Um, and that's that's always. I think that that's a nice. That's you need that kind of dichotomy because that's very <laughs> it's very humbling. Yeah. No. It's it's awesome. Just like um, this man we saw stay, is, needed a, a lettuce <laughs> just <laughs> once. <laughs> just one time a lettuce. Well, that dichotomy that you're speaking of, like Stacy, Stacy. Can we stop saying dichotomy on this episode? Oh, sorry. Can we say lobotomy? That lobotomy that you were speaking of. Uh, uh, <laughs> Stacy, we were walking through the neighborhood, as we usually do, because we usually do the, the stairs. The poor walk. Night. The poor walk. Right. We, we, we run the stairs. And... Um, She's like, oh, it's so weird that we never see any of these neighborhood people out here, you know, exercising and running around at night like everyone else on the stairs. And I said, that's because they have gyms inside their homes. Yeah. We're the poor people. Exactly. We're the ones. We're the reason why they have a neighborhood watch. See, like, my, mine's my, the, the switch in my neighborhood's worse because they're like we have the really, really rich people, they, but they only come in for like the theater. Yeah. But then there's also like street wolves. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot. It's the a street lot wolves like, in my neighborhoods are raccoons and they've been all over the place lately. And it's what? awesome. Yeah. I haven't they, seen any raccoons. Wait. The, the no, no, raccoons, wait. Did I, did I tell the story about the night before? I left wait, these sh- raccoons are awesome because I've wanted to, every time I try and take video of them, they hiss at me and run away <laughs> as soon as I pull out my phone to take a video. You got to chase them down. No, well, give it, you have to give them waivers. They'll yeah, sign their waivers. They sign the waivers we'll back to you. It's, but it's, they stand. They stand on their hind legs and they just kind of look at you and mimic you in a mirror. Whatever you're doing, that, so they're on their hind legs and I'll like move to the left and they'll move to the left. And I, you know, I, I, I try and do mime shit with them and they'll kind of follow for a little bit. And I'm like, I gotta get out my phone. And I pull out my phone. And it's like they know I'm going to record that they're really humans inside these that, bodies see, from a different world. That was honestly that was the uh, the like that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me in uh, in Oakland. Because when I lived in Oakland, I came home one night, and these there's like eight cops around my building, and they had it all sectioned off. And they're like, yeah, you can't go in, in there. There was a, a shootout. And I was like, oh, that's not good. And they're like, yeah, somebody was chasing somebody else. So we have to pick up all those drug vials. I'm like, okay. 
And as I'm waiting outside, six raccoons walked across the street and into a sewer. And I'm like, all right, that's, da, 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 yeah, you that's it. New York, you lived in New York City, and that's pretty intense in that same way, you know? No, I mean, no, because New York City has cops. <laughs> like, New York City, like, I, whatever monster movies you grew up watching, it's not that anymore. If you were in San Francisco, those cops would have turned around and be like, oh, those guys are the bandits. They got the masks exactly. on. Take some. Uh, they have small bags full of jewels tied to their bottoms. Let's get them with our clubs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like um, o- Oakland was basically like if Velociraptor showed up, I'm gonna be like, all right, that that makes sense. So I think I have problems. <laughs> I mean, I know I have problems, but I think I have extra problems because I was going to I was I was going with Jen. This is a, a, a couple months ago when we were, we were checking out our new place. We gotten the keys for a new apartment, and we're gonna go. We were like walking over to go check it out and like measure for furniture or whatever. We we're gonna put it. We we're walking over there and we see a bunch of raccoons crossing the street and she's like baby look raccoons and i'm like ah! I just go <laughs> i'm gonna live here forever running down the street like like they have my money and i chase them around a corner and they all go over a fence and i'm like i've got my phone out at that point and i'm chasing them and it's all like you know cloverfield style just like yeah. running around and i have the light on it and shit so i'm like shining it on them <clears throat> And one of them is just like peeking over the fence, like he's the last guy, like on lookout, and he climbs down, and I'm like, Jenny, that's such a good sign. That's vermin. We're moving to a new neighborhood, and I'm like, good. They yeah. have vermin here. I'm excited. <laughs> um, and the night before we, I was, I was leaving for for Japan. I was, uh, we were, we were very, we were just very drunk, and I was watching Akira for the billionth time because that's what I do when I'm drunk. Uh, and there's a space, there's like a like a foot space between like the back of my TV and the edge of the window. So like you can sort of see and it's this little side alleyway where there's nothing. Like it's, you know, the edge of the house and the edge of the neighbor's house. And there's no, there's not a gap or anything. And I look out there and there's just a fucking large ass raccoon face just staring in at me directly, like looking me right in the eyes. And I just go, but raccoon is Akira. And I was like, that means my trip to Japan will be fun because the raccoon looked at me. I thought you were going to say, turn the TV around. He wants to watch two. (laughs) So uh, two things. One, you should get like eight raccoons in that little well and then throw your TV away and just watch them. I know. I'd love that. Throw some props yeah, and costumes Max, down. Yeah, Max, you need to start it. putting food and a bowl if out, I put a bowl on, of water outside your and outside two, your glass Number door. two, those raccoons are not there for your amusement. They're there to kill you because you have half a raccoon hanging on your wall. <laughs> Did oh, you forget maybe, that? Oh, yeah. Maybe we actually, got you a raccoon we, as a gift. It's we, mounted on your wall. We put a gold chain on him. He has oh. a gold chain on under his Hawaiian shirt now. He looks Do you like think they, so they, they, maybe they he's, think he's, he's they're a casing god. the joint. No, they're casing the joint because <laughs> they think he's rich. He looks like he's been doing. <laughs> 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 they're like this raccoon's fucking loaded. They're like, look, he's got human butlers and everything. <laughs> so my question is, he's if, watching if, Akira. If oh, that's funny little trash bears. <laughs> if raccoons come up to the window while I'm watching Akira, if I put Do on my let them in? if I put on my raccoon Blu-ray, will methed out Japanese biker punks come up to the window? Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna sure. try it. Yes. It's going to work. Or the raccoons will come in and they will, will also watch that with you. I really want to put out a, like a, a night vision camera in the back and then put out some cat food. But I want to put it on a miniature hot dog cart and put out little <laughs> fake hot dogs. <laughs> Put out like some cocktail just, wieners with like pita bread around them. You just them. want to make viral videos is what God, you're saying. God, it'd be so funny. Mm-hmm. Be like raccoons busted robbing hot, giant raccoons rob hot dog cart at night and then just a video you know of regular sized raccoons this is what you need to do you just need, instead of building Gundam models just build to scale human people and, and hot dog carts and put them in your backyard and then you could have a whole little village that raccoons can come and beat up everyone. I love that, that that sentence started with the word just yeah just so build humans I to should, scale I should no, get not, not, not just not not to scale humans, like oh, a too. human, like to the size of a raccoon. So, like, like a full sized human, but it's only two feet tall. Oh, I love that. And so, then, so the, the raccoons have been check out the, the, the hot dogs over there. Oh my god, those people are tiny. We can crush them. So the problem is, is I sh- I sort of share the back porch with neighbors who I haven't met. So they think you'll have kids, right? But they already think I'm. I think kind of weird because I had a. <laughs> I had the car seat from a Toyota Pathfinder out on the back porch when I first moved in. For, for to trap a raccoon <laughs> so you can take it with you I'm everywhere. building a cockpit. <laughs> but I had a sign on there that said, Dear neighbors, sorry for this eyesore. I'll have it moved as soon as I can. But then I left it out there for three weeks and it kept getting rained on. So I covered it with plastic tarps. And then I brought it in. I don't know. 
<laughs> Why do you have a car seat to begin with? Oh, oh. I'm building a cockpit. Your 30s are going to be <laughs> spectacular. Are you fucking, are you, wait, you're serious. You're building a cockpit? Yeah. For what? I can't tell you yet. Are what? you building a spaceship to the moon? Have you seen the film The Iron Giant? Yeah? It's a great movie, isn't it? It, it is. was animated. Wait, what do you what do you do? I'm building a chair to watch The Iron Giant in. No, I'm building I'm building a cockpit for reasons. Um good talk. Are you, do tell. It's a uh, it's going to be a um, so it's not the George Clooney thing in Burn After Reading. I promise you that. I'm not oh, making it's like a, a fuck chair. I'm, not, You're building, building I'm fu- not making a dildo chair, okay? What are you making a cockpit for? For like, I don't know. But if you had a cockpit, wouldn't you nope, do some nope, cool stuff? No, 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 no. Mm, okay. Uh, I want to make a. I want to make a. Um, you, no, I want to. You you don't just say I'm building a cockpit for. I don't know. I wanna, not if you live with somebody else, unless they're in a cult or you hit them with rocks every night. <laughs> Like, I mean, I want to make a, I want to make like a cockpit chair to, you know, to like to play games in and stuff like video games. But are you are you really? building like, like an enclosed like, cockpit or are you just building the chair? No, I'm, Max, I'm like, gonna, like I mean, I'm going to build games? the chair, but then I'm going to have like a, you know, like a virtual boy on like a on like a winch that you pull out like it's your targeting computer in an you, X-wing. Are, are, so you, are, you, are you just going to going to pull out some Donkey Kong Country and be like, I'm sitting in the Admiral's chair? Like Does, what? I don't know. Oh, or are you just going to play Steel Battalion? I mean, maybe I do have a Steel. I need to get that back. That's in the studio. I no, think. no, you don't. No, you don't need that. <laughs> I mean, you don't. Know. I need to get an no, Xbox too. No, I'm going to have to get no. a bigger apartment to fit all these things in. But no, you, I mean, you, I have, I have, I have. I think some, you're uh, trying to play butt games, but you're hiding it. <laughs> No, man, I'm going to play butt games in the bedroom in a fucking bed like a normal-ass man. Oh, right. And then you get to be a normal-ass man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, how do you respond when your My girlfriend My cockpit parts like... got wet on the front yard, so the raccoons got mad. I'm a normal-ass man. <laughs> <laughs> Max. <laughs> Let's what? watch Avatar. When your girlfriend... Yeah, I'm going like, to watch Avatar you... in that. Uh, okay. <laughs> What are you doing? I'll put on my blue my blue body stocking and go in the chair and be like, I'm like the Navi if it so one of those hover ships. I'm like the Navi <laughs> sat down for two and a half hours. All I like is that basically building a cockpit is the start of how many fucking movies about someone that's crazy and eccentric and we all make fun of them just like and then we're they doing go the to Max. the moon. And then who's the one that goes flying off into the night? I turn my house again? into a large gun that shoots me out of it. I yep. just pick like Max. Max is the all of the characters except the aliens and explorers right now. Except yeah. he's building it not out of a tilt a world, but an old Toyota chair. I got some racing stri- racing stripes for straps. your cockpit. Well, I get racing stripes, but they're, they're <laughs> I got a, I got a harness from a race car, <laughs> so I don't fall out of the Toyota Pathfinder chair. <laughs> I love this. I honestly love this. I, I'm so excited for this. I can't believe this is a real. <laughs> this is real. Have you seen those kids who built the the Battlestar Galactica cockpit that it can actually like do loops? Those guys and are shit? dorks. <laughs> fucking thing except yours is stationary i love it i love that you're doing this so what else are you like what else are you planning on attaching to it um i don't know maybe like magazine s- rack <laughs> toilet chewing uh, gum dispensers i'm probably gonna get like a cool hat to wear when i'm in it <laughs> like maybe maybe like some fun whistles is it gonna have any Ooh, klaxons yeah like a pancake tube are you gonna have pedals on it probably not i don't know i'm not really into what about what about like like joysticks oh yeah i mean duh you know I, I don't know i mean there's not uh, no, duh, no no like, there's a lot see, of things thing is, i haven't really thought that far ahead i've thought i've thought about the 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 seating arrangement and like what it's i might one put seat. i know i mean but i've been like <laughs> like am i gonna have did you, it? did you really think about the seating arrangement though yeah did I you think di- about the I way have, i have a diagram do you want to see the, yes, fucking the fucking diagram? Diagram? <laughs> did you think about the way this seat fits in with the rest of your house no i haven't found because that's what a seating arrangement is motherfucker i'm gonna wait till jen leaves to go somewhere and i'm gonna bring it out and then i'm gonna come back and be like i don't know if i can lift it and then i'll have it out there oh, she doesn't know about it no she knows about it but it's in my back room where i keep garbage like you a know. cockpit. Like my cockpit. Yeah. So wait, Are you guys in a two-bedroom? Are what? you in a two-bedroom? Yeah. I mean, no. They said it was, but there's really just a back room that isn't insulated where the bar and my Gundam table and a bunch of boxes of comic books are. Oh, you can, and you can take all the Alcoholica stuff with you? That's where it is. I can't get to it right now. Oh. I'm gonna ha- you're going to have to help me, help me move my cockpit before I can get to the Alcoholica <laughs> stuff. As long as I don't fly to the moon when I'm i got to say, this. my back room is the craziest like- place in, in my neighborhood right now. What was that, Anthony? I would like to point out, I would like to point out that I 100% endorse everything about this. Of course mix. you do. I would love to help you assemble this cockpit. No Brian, what, what do you... It, what well, please come over and help becomes. 
It really just looks like a, a, a baby seat with a toilet paper dispenser <laughs> on the side of it. <laughs> Let me see. I'm not fucking with you. That's supposed right. to be a virtual boy, not toilet paper. It looks like toilet paper. Okay, well, so did the virtual boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what it is is he has the car seat, and then it looks like he has a PVC pipe frame going around it. Enclosing, correct, correct. Enclosing I'm, it. I'm torn between having PVC pipes you on the bottom to... with with rubber runners on the bottom so it doesn't scratch the I, floor, I, or if I want to do uh, you're gonna... you know, two by fours and then put uh, you know ABS. Uh, as someone who's been over. as someone who's been uh, wor- working. Uh, <clears throat> in a wood shop for quite a, quite some time and uh, durability and strength. You need to go with metal pipes on this one, not plastic PVC. For what? For his... Don't... What are you doing? I'm encouraging Oh, it's a man him. who but needs to work. The, don't, the, don't, the, no, you're not even... He's not back, building this for anything. The back part He's not really, going to fucking space. The back part really isn't a load-bearing thing, though. Okay. You know. Also... Even though, even though you will get... <laughs> I love Brian. I love Frank. Why Brian. are there seatbelts? <laughs> okay. It's not going anywhere. Because I'm going to be so excited when I'm in it. Oh, that one's all out. out. But, uh, d- but Max, here's what I have. A, uh, here's what. So you have your HUD, your Virtual Boy HUD, and right. it swings. Yeah, virtual Boys are kind of expensive, so I might just get one of those. Uh, These are the guys who try to be like Ryan. You sleep in a race car bed. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! But you know those those Fisher Price things where you you flick the switch and it shows a different picture, a, a view, <laughs> yeah, a view master. view master, yeah, man. Virtual boys are expensive. I figure I like spray one of those silver and put some battleship parts on it and make it look like a you know. Oh, you got one right there. Yeah, look at that. That could totally be like a view, like a like a, a, a you know you uh, what do you call it? Computer. It's a view master. You giving that to me for my cockpit? No, I'm telling you to look in it right now. Oh, okay. I know what's in it. I mean, it's a... again, once again, our show oh, cool. is just proving Holy to people. Holy shit! There's ladies in here. There's a chance for everyone uh, to, that's a... to have sex. Yeah, no I matter guess what Howard your, Stern. No I matter what it. your preference, no matter what you're into for fun, Ew. it's not too weird <laughs> no, for someone it's, it's to find not, you. I don't know anything anymore. I really don't. Yeah, that's that's. It's a thing. I envy you. The ability to make a cockpit and have someone. All you have is, to do is get a, a chair out of an old car, and then yeah. But for now, s- I don't have someone that has decided to live with me. Like I need to at least lure them into that far before I pull out the fucking chair and start building a cockpit. It's not Just really a lot of say. No- say that you have a car that you're gonna put it into, and and then say that you don't. It's in the shop, <laughs> and then as you get to know them, you know, eventually be like, look. There's something I need to tell you, and they'll be like, "Do you what? sell plutonium?" They'll be like, "They'll be like, what is it?" And you'll be, yeah, because like, you know what? They'll be like that that chair for that car that's in the shop. There is no car, and there is no shop. That's just a chair that I made because I want an X-wing. You know what ladies do all the time is they look they look at a baby seat on the floor of an apartment covered in <laughs> rainbow suspenders <laughs> and plastic Gundam parts and a viewfinder and they go, Man, I can't wait to see the rest of that car. How much how much <laughs> have you spent on this cockpit so far? Zero dollars. Oh so you just found a seat on the street and No, my my I was talking about how I wanted to go with my brother to a to a pick and pull. You know, like one of those with his car places. Mm-hmm. And he was like, my my friends who I'm staying with have an old uh, Pathfinder they're using for parts. Do you want me to get the you know the, the, the Land Rover? Or whatever? So you told your brother you're like, I want to build a cockpit. This yes. is okay. And what was his reaction? Uh, Punch. He's <laughs> like, Are you going to be around on Wednesday? I can bring it by. <laughs> I love it. I love All it. Right. Your brother sounds amazing. Fuck He's it. given me half my fantasy novels. Fuck it. I'm in the minority then. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Oh, hey, no, I, oh. I'm with you. I'm with you in the whole like this cockpit doesn't make uh, well, sense. Scott, no. apparently we can't see what makes uh, cinnamon toast crunch so good anymore. <laughs> right, that's, we reached the old. We reached the part where like, we don't understand why the kids are eating apple jacks. Yeah, you know, it like, really that, taste that's like why you, know, you never see old people in commercials unless they're like, I don't get it. <laughs> that's yeah. their whole thing. Like, no, it's never just like, hey, old man, you'll love this. Yeah. Hey, like, oh, Brian, cool, that's bubble Brian. tape bubble gum is no longer. We're for the old men. Yeah, look, you guys, we are the them. You guys have like a couple years of downtime and then you're going to be fucking set to either be on a lawn talking about how excited you are about the latest grass devices and seeds that are available from, you know, uh, Home Depot. Mm-hmm. You know, like a couple old guys talking about lawns. Who likes lawns? These old white guys sure guys like do. their lawns. Or if you really want to, you know, if you want to just kind of rock the boat, but not too much, but just a little bit, you could be really stoked about Werther's Originals. <laughs> 
That's a, that's a good I'm one. Already, I'm when, already there. When my granddaughter comes by to visit, I she w- looks. I was there in seventh grade. Yeah, she doesn't give a shit about my ships and bottles, but she sure loves toffee. I got a new flavor bag with a pecan swirl. <laughs> It'll fuck your cock up. <laughs> My grandkids used to think I was boring, but they come by now, and I've got orange cream worthers. I do think it's it's really it's really amazing to me that the advertising world they, they look at you when they always go the eighteen to thirty five because mm-hmm. you know what happens after that old people go oh suck your own dick yeah <laughs> that's what they say to their TV nine hundred times a day they're like hey old man want to come party and the and he nah fuck I you. have mesothelioma <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit most old people there it's miraculous how hard they don't give a fuck and I'm like. I'm knocking at that door right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm so close to, like, to just like, hey, you guys want to come down? And they're like, no, fuck you. Yeah. Go to hell. I, I want to sleep in my own bed. I watched an episode of MTV's True Life the other day. Mm-hmm. And, A, what pissed me off was um, it was a True Life episode from 2013 on MTV's Retro Block. <laughs> And I was like, motherfucker, this is a rerun, not retro. Yeah. <clears throat> B, I found myself yelling at the children on screen. Be Why? like, you're ruining your lives. What are you doing? Yep. You're making mistakes when you're 18. Oh, you fools. <laughs> no, you just won a million dollars. Don't spend it all in one day. <laughs> Because that was the episode. It was like, I'm a new millionaire. The guy's like, I'm going to Cabo. Fucking dollar bills everywhere. I don't give a shit. I'm going to be rich forever. And then like halfway through, he's like, oh, I, I forgot I had to pay taxes. Uh, I don't have any money left. That's horrible. Yeah. That's I'd so love bad. to see like a like a gritty alternate angle take on Adventure Time where the Ice King is just like a sensible man. And Finn and Jake are just like the most annoying fucking millennials. I think that's kind of Adventure Time. I think I think there have been episodes where the Ice King is like, "Come on, I just want to be normal." But no, like I mean, where he's just a regular man, and the rest of them, they're all they're <coughs> oh, all oh. doing, you it's, know, it doesn't take place in the world of goo. No, they, those kids are just they're just listening to dubstep really loud, and they're and they're <laughs> doing DMT, and they have salvia or something. I don't know what kids. So basically, do. Finn and Jake are Beavis and Butthead, and and the Ice King is Mr. Anderson. <laughs> is <laughs> oh, <laughs> is the is the dubstep gone yet? Uh, video games are still using them in trailers, so it has about another year. Because it's they it's, used it in the most recent Sonic the Hedgehog trailer, so we've got about so another I, six months. Before I think, it's but gone. that's that when when it bubbles up to that that realm, like once it's in like it's in the Lego Skrillex, movie. Skrillex went from playing the Oakland Arena <laughs> to the Civic Center, right? So he went from playing an arena to a very small theater, right? So it's and it's, I don't I don't I don't have a problem with it. We've talked about Dawson before on the show. It's it's fine. Do what you want. I don't care. <laughs> it's I don't give a shit, but I really do feel like it was a thing that was there for a little bit, and now it's it got it got taken like every other thing ever has. Yeah, it's rap and, rock. Yeah, and it's totally rap rock. Absolutely, hundred percent. That that's the best metaphor possible. You and know, it, bub- it bubbled up to the top to the DreamWorks and the and the stuff like that, and then it's it's now that's where it lives. You know what I was thinking about the other day. Um, so the whole like thing where Irrational Games closed and Ken Levine's like, I'm going to go out in the woods with 20 people and we're going to make independent games for 2K or whatever. But first I'll lay off a hundred of my friends. Right. Goodbye. And, Who likes indie gems? And 2K Little games is just beautiful they, indie games. They reach their big hand across the table and they'll be like, oh, just one moment, Mr. Levine, we'll take this right here. And they grab the piece of paper that says Bioshock rights, you know, yeah. I would love to play a Bioshock that is set at Woodstock 99. <laughs> I think that'd be everything's on amazing. Fire. That's wow. That's really. That good. would be fucking great. I'm so. excited. That was excited. the one where everything was on fire, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was the one where like, hey, we painted our naked bodies, and Fred Durst is like, rape them, break stuff, <laughs> and Kid Rock is like, bow to bow, and everyone's like, no one knows what that means. Wow. Yeah. You know, if Bioshock Infinite occasionally panned over to a small stage. Where white people were rapping, that basically would have been that game. You're damn close. You're knocking on heaven's door with that one. I love that idea. That's really smart. I just can't, I can't wait until that almost counteracts earlier when you were trying to build a cockpit in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy asshole. You know, I was I was saying the other day, I really I really think the '90s was our generation's Vietnam. You know, I you, you know what's really? funny though. I was thinking about that today too in regards to music, where. <clears throat> 
I grew up like listening to my parents' music, the seventies, the, the music from the seventies. It had this kind of lasting effect where I listened to it as a teen, and then now I still listen to it in my thirties. However, I'm the same age that they were when they had me, and I'm not listening to Nirvana or The Offspring, and I I don't think there's a whole lot of teenagers outside of just discovering it and being like, okay, this is kind of cool, but I don't think there's a whole right. lot of people our age who are like. I'm listening to Nirvana today, all day. Right, like I, um, I, I think that I think it was Bla- like, Black Hole Sun came on shuffle on my and you hit skip on my thing this morning on the way to work. I actually listened to the first minute of it, and then I did the horrible thing where I started analyzing it, and I'm like, the song's probably about heroin. Yeah, <laughs> and I've been listening but, to it my whole life. It's it's probably about like shooting up, but what and some fat girl finds you in a motel, and I'm like, what, I, I don't know what this is. But what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is though, time. what I'm saying though is that like that '70s music will always live on and and carry on for. Longer than any of us will live, and I think people are still going to revisit it because it was just such a special time in music. So what, when where they say, changed what, everything, what, what, but what, in what the do you 90s, mean? example. What I mean, like what, what, like, like pop, it, disco, like you rock, can to, like, what credence, like okay, okay yeah, 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 Zeppelin, sure, oh, oh okay, okay, S- shit like that, okay. So because I got like four Fleetwood Mac albums, and yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, you know. But what I'm saying is like you, the 90s music, I don't think is going to be as visited heavily. The influential music of the 90s and 80s, for that matter, aren't going to be visited by as many people as the 70s will be of a younger generation. A younger That's generation really is interesting. It's going to discover 70s music and love it, and, and at late 60s, early 70s music, and love it to death, and will continue loving it to death forever. However, I don't think the 80s, 90s, and now music is going to even come close to that i totally agree <clears throat> and i think it was just this defining moment in a, in a musical genre that <clears throat> will never be surpassed for a very very long time i agree with and you. and i think yeah, classic that's, rock that's really is always going to be 70s yep that's really interesting I, mm-hmm. I i i think about that i listen to a lot of 80s and 90s rap mm-hmm. and in the last 10 years all of the 80s stuff has become in Entirely novelty to me. Mm-hmm. Like it's just been like hey, but it do in the fun time club when I'm going to bed and blah. Yeah. and I'm like, what are you talking about? This is this is nonsense. <laughs> yeah, but that in, in the '90s it's like, yeah, my raps is twice the process and power of a Pentium chip. And I'm like, well, that doesn't that hold doesn't up. hold up anymore. So like, and and in 2000 it's just like really fast, uh, like crunk beats and people being like, I sell drugs. And I'm like, well, not anymore. Now yeah. you're like 50. Yeah, like I I, I will revisit. Green Day and Nirvana to be like, I remember what it was like to be in high school. This was really fun. I think mm-hmm. I, I think the sort of underlying problem, not problem necessarily, but one of the flaws of, of rap is that it's it's very immediate. It's the same yeah. thing about South Park. Like, South Park is consistently fucking awesome and on point, but it's always really on point about that week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And That's actually really smart because rap, I would say, probably has the fastest turnaround time for of any musical genre because like when before twitter when rappers used to battle like they would actually be like he made fun of me i'm putting out a song in a day like they'd go in the studio they'd get a beat and they put out a song the next day it was basically the south park of music yeah there's there's so many there's so many like rap battle songs that i've heard half the rap battle and i didn't know that there was a battle to begin (laughs) with i mean uh like i i love easy e and it took me uh, like 2 years before i realized that dre day was uh, against easy e yeah. you know yeah, yeah. And, it was, it was, it was you, you didn't know that <laughs> 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 oh regale us with more of your rap facts sir ryan uh, scott ryan oh, scott bringing us back ryan do you listen to rap not really did you ever i mean i have a little bit of, of dumb rap on my mp3 player i have what yeah, have Eminem. Eminem songs can i make you a can i make you a mix cd i have damn it feels good to be a gangster because uh, it was an off uh, uh, office space yeah. yeah i'm so glad you have that yeah ghetto boys are amazing yeah. uh so the best piece of trivia about ghetto boys is they had a guy in there who was brian you might have to help me out here was he an albino midget or was he just a midget um or a dwarf or he was actually a summon what <laughs> <laughs> that was that was basically like they were in an rpg battle with with another rap crew and they summoned uh, a monster dwarf that was uh, that was um was it bushwick bill yeah and okay he sh- bushwick bill was basically like the some it, it was what happens when you make a wish and it goes awry 
<laughs> like that's okay. there was a man in their crew. And if you look up pictures of him, you'll be like, wow, Brian's telling the truth. Uh, they so, somebody like summoned a monster mm-hmm. and they got this instead. And so they, I heard they so were, when you summon Gilgamesh in Final Fantasy and you get one of the bad swords and not the one exactly. that kills everything. Exactly. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it I was like a, a doppelganger leprechaun. They've got that one album book. cover that they were like, they were on their way to go and shoot the normal like photo shoot of like, here's us posing with our cool things that, yep. for the rap cover. But and suddenly, for whatever reason, Bushwick Bill got shot. Yep. So they instead had to take a picture of him on a fucking stretcher at the ER. So they're all kind of just posing with him and he's just bloody on a stretcher. Which is amazing. Like, it's, that's it, no, it's incredible. It's, it's not even, aside from the, the umbrella that is rap album covers, it's one of the single most incredible human pictures of all time. Like, it seriously is. It's like, what? There's a monster in a rolling chair, <laughs> and these two guys are escaping him from the hospital. Like, if you're listening to the show, use your phone up, or yeah. your whatever it is. Look up the, up. Uh, the album, uh, We Can't Be Stopped by the Ghetto Boys. Look up that album cover. Yep. Yep. And that was like, I mean, at people were like, hey, Wu-Tang ain't nothing to fuck with. You know why? Because we got some fake bees. And- <laughs> <laughs> the Ghetto Boys were like, no, you can try to shoot yeah. our power dwarf, and we will live through the night. He's our street summon. We're going to kill you with fire blades when we get out of this. But it's- Watch out. Our goblin powerous <laughs> Harris demon sword will fight you to the end of the night. Like, I've never seen anything Wait, terrifying uh, as that. Bushwick, Bushwick Bill is throwing up a, it's almost like a gang sign, but also kind of saying, hey, well, the other dude is just like limping by with a cane, yeah. And the other one is pushing the. And they're they're all covered in blood. And like Bushwick Bill, if he could, if he had a caption in that picture, it would be like, <laughs> <laughs> "It's that scary. It's it's unbelievable that they. That's a thing that they took a picture of. And somebody at the hospital was like, "Oh, there they are again. <laughs> well, it's they're those, back. Those, those wacky old ghetto boys, <laughs> <laughs> living up to their name. They are." <laughs> He's like, "Well, my mind's playing tricks on me. <laughs> I think someone tried to kill their power dwarf. Okay." <laughs> Well, his eye was already fucked up. Yeah. Let the monster baby out. Yeah. All yeah. right, everyone. I'm going to bring us back for our wrap up. See what I did there? Wrap I up. I like that. Sorry, oh! I'm, I'm bad at this sometimes. That's um, good. That was a pun. But, uh, yeah, if you guys want to talk to us more about rap music, you can do that on Twitter. Uh, if you, Ryan, who is our biggest rap fan, you can reach him at Rydog. <laughs> you can hit up Scott at Scott underscore Bromley. Max at Max Scoville. If you'd like Brian to talk about Easy E, I'm always happy to talk about Easy E. Brian uh, at you know, Agent Ruthless Fizzle. Records. Yep, yep. Uh, and, uh, me at Chuff Money. Uh, you can send in your letters, which I swear I'm going to start reading. I actually have been starring the really good ones and keeping them now in a folder so I can have those on deck. Do uh, we have one right now? Like one really quick one? Do we have time, guys? Just one, one really quick one. Do Actually, we, yes. Can... There's one I we have to read. Okay, it's gonna, so, it's, go. It's, no. it's kind of a, it's kind of a slight bummer. Was that one, a go or no? Ian writes in, and Ian says, "When your podcast first started, one of my friends and roommates at the time introduced me to it during the third or fourth episode. Almost immediately, we started doing a weekly ritual, of sitting down and listening to a new episode to, uh, together every Friday night, usually while having a few beers. I the love ritual that. Ritual became quickly became one of our favorite pastimes and something both of us both of us look forward to every week." Eventually, we moved out of that apartment and saw each other less often. But every week, we would still listen to the comedy button and talk about it when we would see each other. This morning, while I was on my way to work, I received a phone call letting me know that my friend, Jordan, died in a car accident early this morning. Oh. Since I got that call, I've been re-listening to some of the, our favorite episodes and drinking some of the beers while we en- that we would enjoy while listening to them. So he just wanted to say thank you. Uh, every impression of Ryan Scott's dad, Brap, Horse Boots, and Ritzy Voice are helping him deal with this right now. So more than one person asked us to mention Jordan. So we had s- multiple Jordan's friends. And you said he was him. a Kickstarter donor? He was also a Kickstarter donor. Well, thank you right in your pussy hole, sir. Wow. Yep. Yeah, thank you. So, right Thank inside. you right inside your pussy hole. <laughs> thank you yeah. right inside your pussy hole. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's really sad. I'm glad you guys got to bond over this dumb yeah. show. And then it brought you together. And... I will say it, but I hope he was not listening to us when he died in that yes. car. Because a lot of people have written in and be like, hey, I almost died when I was laughing at your show in my car. And I was yeah. like, please pull over. Yeah. <laughs> and I will also yeah. say it. Uh, I hope he's still subscribed in heaven. I think Scott, do that. what? Scott, what? What? <laughs> it's, ter- it's terrible. You can't get RSS in heaven. I think Anne Frank would have been a believer. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. um, I hope your friend, your friend enjoys the fact that we're still being dumb even after his death. And uh, thank you so much for listening. That's really fucking cool. Yeah, that that's you guys fucking. Came that's, together that, that is fucking heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time. Yeah. So yeah. There, there's something I wanted. Warm to, breaking. There's something I wanted to say real quick, and I I hope that like if and when this show ends someday, which I hope it never does, but all, all good things do. Um, that the takeaway really is that this show was about a bunch of friends hanging out. Yeah. Like, and a lot of people have listened to this show and they, they've just gone on to be alone for 10 days in a row and been like, Oh, thank God. I like, I got your show. Great. I'm glad you used our show to help you through your loneliness. But, uh, this show is about good friends learning about each other and saying horrible things. Um, and you need to take that home with you because that's, that's the real takeaway. Like this- be around good people, hang out with them, and spend mm-hmm. all the time you can with them because one day they will die in a car. It's fuck. <laughs> no, it's, it's true though, right? That could happen to any one of us at any time. Yeah, a cockpit it, even, you know, or treasure a cockpit. everyone. It's exactly. the it's the corniest thing in the world, but it really our show is like every episode of Thundercats except for the for the parts where they're cats or where they do anything. It's just the part at the end where they all are like, "Well, I'm glad we learned a lesson about," and then Snarf says some bullshit, and they all laugh, and the show is over. He's like. Bah! Pussy. <laughs> oh boy. See, that's what Bushwick Bill was. He was <laughs> he was snarf for the ghetto boys. The ghetto boys. <laughs> that's and I'm on that album. Snarf. That okay, perfect. It's yep. Snarf. It feels good right, to be a good gangster. Good IGN. See you up at noon every Monday at noon. The Brian does. Go to Rev3. Uh, Rev3. But, 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 YouTube.com slash Rev3 Games. There you where go. You can check out uh, Scott Bromley's internet wormhole. Rabbit and, hole. Rabbit hole. <laughs> Rabbit hole. Oh. Every, same every same thing. And I reviewed Plants vs. Zombies. This Who week. won? Go, Wait, no spoilers. Can, don't tell me. Skeletons. You can go to youtube.com slash detoid to see the stuff that uh, Max is doing all the time. And actually go look at it now because I'm actually doing stuff. I put up a thing called Dumb Idiot Ideas on f- last uh, a week ago. There Nobody cares. You right just now. put up the best show you've ever made and in yes, your entire life. And yes, I have a new weekly show. It's called Farts and Crafts. Brian. It's called Farts and Crafts, where Max Scoville takes one of your dumb comments that you wrote about a stupid news story about the inconsequential and idiotic video game industry, and he turns it into a beautiful, magical cartoon that he also talks about while cameraman films him rather shakily. How'd We're going to get a tripod, that? but you know. Okay, in the meantime. I love it's it perfect so the way it is. Like, subscribe, and yeah. use the protection. Go to geekbox.net so you can listen to the Geekbox podcast that Ryan Scott does where he talks more. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, remember to check out my video game, Daylight on april 8th when it comes out oh release right. date new story All oh right. shit is that exclusive that, nope no a comedy with button that, exclusive <laughs> and with that we are done go out there and treasure someone and don't forget to continue being your nerdy self because you'll still get laid <laughs> right near the beach lot of mercy Smoke weed lots of times. Boomba clock, buddy boy. Going out to Everett.